Valentina is a very classy lady, she even brings makeup to space. But that's because we're going to be doing a lot of science today. Welcome to What The Math. Alright guys, in this video we're going to be using Kerbal Space Program and this beautiful ship I recently built without really putting too much time into it because it's actually, I just realized I'm missing a lot of things on it, including these uh, fuel fuel lines were supposed to be going inside the wings, but they didn't, they didn't go inside. I don't know what happened there. Anyway, so the, yes, we're going to be using this ship with not two, not three, but six wings to explore something called aerogravity assist. Now, this is a phenomenon that's very, very theoretical and has never been used in real life. But we're going to try to see if that's a thing, if it exists, and also if it actually works in Kerbal Space Program. Now, what is it? Now, here's an example of a regular gravity assist. Essentially, it's a maneuver where you pass behind an object in space, usually a very massive object, um, and then using their momentum, you gain a little bit of extra speed because their speed is added to yours. Now, here's actually a picture of how this works. So this is actually also known as a slingshot maneuver, and it's a sort of a more advanced uh, maneuver for space exploration that a lot of Kerbal Space Program enthusiasts learn uh, early on, and but it's really hard to master. The thing is, once you do master it, you'll realize it's going to save you a lot of fuel. So, for example, if I were to actually um, go to Jewel, where is Jewel? Here's Jewel. If I were to go to Jewel, one of the easiest ways of reaching Jewel is to first pass by Eve, get, oh, there's some chatter going on, uh, get some extra speed uh, from Eve's, uh, basically, gravitational assist. And then using this slingshot maneuver, you'll be able to reach a lot closer to Jewel, thus saving at least 2,000 meters per second delta V. You can do this several times. You can actually use uh, Eve and then come back to Kerbin again to waste almost no fuel at all and then reach Jewel that way. But it does require a little bit of a calculation for when you have to do it because you need to find a specific uh, time window for this maneuver to actually work perfectly. But what is air gravity assist? Well, that's even more complicated. What it essentially is, it's a maneuver that only works with bodies that have atmosphere. Specifically, we're going to be talking about Eve and Kerbin. Um, so according to NASA scientists, and I guess some other scientists that have um, hypothesized this maneuver, what it is is essentially... It's a maneuver where you do the same thing that you would regularly do. So you would actually plot uh, your path so that it passes by behind the planet and get, gets a little bit of its extra speed uh, from the planet. But the thing is, you also bring wings. And not only wings, but you bring a lot of wings that you then use in reverse manner. So kind of like, let me show you what I mean by this. Kind of like, oh yeah, I can just choose my prograde right here. There we go. Uh, kind of like this. So you would fly through the upper atmosphere, upside down, using your wings to push you lower into the planet. What that's hypothetically supposed to do, it's supposed to basically give you even more gravity, so, so to speak, or more, more pull toward the planet, thus increasing your overall effect of the gravity assist, and also even giving you a little bit more in terms of um, gravity turn. So it will actually increase your angle of turn as well. In other words, it, it should technically increase your kinetic energy, giving you a huge boost um, of speed and reducing the fuel usage. So it's a maneuver that has been hypothesized. It has never been tested. And today we're going to be testing this in Kerbal Space Program um, basically seeing if it works and if it does work how much fuel will you be able to actually get or sorry not get but save and also how much delta v will you actually gain i brought uh three wings uh total lift here is actually quite high i don't remember exactly how much it is but it's definitely over over 30 and uh the airplane or i guess that's not an airplane but the space plane itself is not particularly big i do have a lot of fuel in there i actually have something like 5500 delta v and we're going to be going to eve and basically exploring this particular maneuver there 
and through the magic of internet look at that we're approaching eve already at 70 kilometers um in of periapsis so this will help us pass through the upper atmosphere if the atmosphere starts at 90 kilometers we're we're going to be going in about 20 kilometers inside its atmosphere and we're, let's do several things first we're going to pass by with our wings in a normal direction so wings up so kind of like a normal airplane which theoretically should actually lift us a little bit and so we might actually not get anything from it so and just to show you what we currently have as our sort of apoapsis here we're currently passing um by eve and we if we were to just fly past it right now without really getting any gravity assist our uh, apoapsis would be about 18.9 or let's just say 19 um is it million or billion 19 billion uh, meters in other words uh 19 million kilometers so just remember this number and let's see if we gain or lose some Okay, so we're about to enter Eve's atmosphere. We're at 100 kilometers right now, and we're facing our prograde velocity vector, meaning that our wings are basically just like a regular airplane. They're going to be lifting us up a little bit. So in a few seconds, you'll start seeing the burning sensation. The fire is about to come up here. So here we are passing at 74, 73. We're about to reach 70. This is going to be our periapsis. And right now, technically, our wings are lifting us. Uh, there's a bit of overheating going on, but that's okay. So let's see what we get after we finish this maneuver. And this is essentially with just wings in regular um, rotation, regular formation, regular position. So the lift is up right now. Now, because of the actual uh, air pressure, we lost a little bit of delta V here because we we're passing by uh, and, you know, the air was actually kind of stopping us, but not a lot. We didn't lose a lot. We, I think we lost about 50 meters per second. And so let's look at what our periapsis is now, and if it actually increased or decreased. Uh, sorry, not periapsis, apoapsis. And it's now at 16.5. So we lost about 1.5 billion uh, meters of delta V. So this is obviously not what we wanted. This is not a slingshot maneuver that we wanted because we just lost a lot of the delta V and we lost a lot of the uh, kinetic energy. So let's do this again uh, one more time, but this time we're going to go upside down. All right, so here we are flying upside down, and now technically the wings should be pushing us toward the planet and also giving us a little bit of extra, I guess you could call it gravity, that's what it's called in this particular maneuver, but really what it's giving us is more pull toward the planet, which should be increasing the effects of gravity assist. I need to straighten out a little bit, and let's see if this does anything. And we're about to leave the Eve's atmosphere in two, one, right now. All right, so let's see what our apoapsis is after the upside down maneuver. And the answer is 16.324. All right, interesting. So it's even less. Now that's possible because I actually did move a little bit when I was um, in the atmosphere. Maybe I lost some of the speed because of that. But the original value was actually 18.5. Or something like that, right? 18 point, almost 19. Um, so it seems like the air gravity assist doesn't really do anything. Or, and it basically, it does actually cause a little bit of loss to your delta V. Uh, so maybe it's because I'm actually going too low. Let's try to go a little bit higher. Let's go through 80 kilometers and see if it's better that way. And really what we're trying to beat is, we're trying to beat this value right here, which is 19, uh, 19 million, or 19 billion uh, meters. So let's see if we can actually maybe beat that value by going a little bit farther from the atmosphere. Let's change this to 80. So right now we're going to go and do this again at 80, and let's just turn before we get into the atmosphere. And let's see if we can actually beat 18.9 uh, billion meters. As long as we can beat that, it means that it works. If we don't beat it, or if our um, apoapsis decreases, it means that this particular maneuver doesn't really work in this game or at all. And when I say at all, I mean in real life. So maybe, just maybe that, uh, despite the fact that you do get a little bit of extra pull toward the planet, the fact that you're losing so much velocity due to friction um, or air braking as the snow, um, might not be actually that beneficial after all. So, all right, so we're doing this again at 80 this time. There's going to be a little bit of burn, just a little bit of burn, and we're not going to move. We're going to try to just fly past this area. This is very, very higher uh, or upper atmosphere part, 
that doesn't really have that much atmosphere. If you look right here, it doesn't really have that much. Even though uh, for Eve, that's actually quite a lot. I think this is still like similar to what Kerbin has on the surface. Uh, but anyway, so here we are flying. If you look at my Delta V, it's actually not increasing that much, but maybe just a few meters per second, because uh, this particular design is actually very aerodynamic, so you don't lose that much Delta V due to air braking, unless you go sideways. And in this case, we're not going sideways, we're going nose up or nose in. So I think we lost about 20 Delta V, which is not a big deal, but let's see if we gain anything from this maneuver as soon as we leave. Uh, the atmosphere after about 90 kilometers and right about now I should be start I should start looking and the answer to this question of air uh, air gravity assist is uh, I'm not sure I think it's a no no I think it's a no it used to be 18.9 now it's 18.8 it didn't really change that much I think it's actually not worth uh, bringing wings because First of all, you add extra weight. Second of all, it doesn't seem to do anything. And third of all, going through atmosphere also does this. So if you actually want to do this on EVE, if you actually want to try this on EVE, this is what's going to happen. Now, as you may have guessed, I was using a cheat when I was just doing this. I disabled the maximum temperature effects. Here's what's going to happen if you decide to come into the EVE's atmosphere using a space plane. Uh oh, that's what's going to happen. That's right. You cannot use this maneuver in an altitude above um, 85 kilometers or anywhere below 85, sorry. Uh, 85 to 90 is fine, but as soon as you reach 84 and you're going super fast in a space plane, EVE will take its toll on you by destroying your spaceship. So this maneuver, also known as air gravity assist, unfortunately does not work in Kerbal Space Program. The only way to do gravity assist is by using slingshot maneuver, which is this right here. And what you do for a gravity assist is you pass by EVE just above its atmosphere, so anywhere above 90 kilometers of altitude, and this should give you the highest possible gain in uh, kinetic energy or essentially just give you the highest possible boost. So let's do that. Let's do it this, this way now. It, it doesn't really matter which way you go. It can go um, nose up, nose down, because you're not really going through the atmosphere. And this will give you the highest boost of velocity, at least in this game and possibly in real life as well, because it seems like the loss you get from um, air friction, from air braking, in comparison to what you get from the actual um, increase in energy due to uh, due to the wings lift pulling you toward the planet, feels like or seems like is just not enough. There's no not enough justification to bring so many wings and to do all this just to possibly get a few delta uh, a few meters of second delta v extra. Anyway, so this is essentially and this is how you would do this gravity assist by basically passing by Eve. Uh, moving away from it and just doing really nothing. You just have to make sure that you don't get inside its atmosphere, which is quite thick and has an altitude of 90 kilometers. So once you pass by EVE, uh, uh, let's just wait a little bit longer. Here we go. Let's just check what we have now for our apoapsis. And the answer to that is 19.5 five almost so it did increase a little bit more from what it was before so essentially this will give you the highest possible boost and this is almost enough for us to reach duna uh, if i did another uh flyby this time by Kerbin, so this is what you would do so kind of right here this would be a secondary uh boost that you get from Kerbin by passing by behind it and this would give you another gravity assist that will project you even further into uh the outer solar system and closer to Jewel and Dress and so on. So this is how a normal gravity assist would work. And it seems like this is still the best way to get those extra Delta V uh, or those extra meters per second in Delta V, as opposed to using something like air gravity assist, which is something more theoretical and at least in this game doesn't seem to work at all. Nevertheless, if you'd like to find out more about this theoretical approach, also known as AGA or Air Gravity Assist, I'm posting two references, uh, two, two papers written in the 90s about this particular approach, written by uh, actual scientists, and they do describe this in a little bit more detail and why they think it would actually work. Anyway, this has been What the Math with Kerbal Space Program and Investigation of Air Gravity Assist.
Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please subscribe. Also definitely check out some of the other Kerbal Space Program videos I posted right here. Finally, subscribe to my Twitch because every Saturday I am going to be Twitching using Kerbal Space Program or some other awesome space game. So definitely tune in and let's have fun together. And finally, I recently started Patreon page, so if you'd like to support this channel and help it grow, check out the link for Patreon in the description below. Now, if you'd like to see more awesome investigations and you have some really cool ideas about what you'd like to see, post them in the comments below. Also, please tell me, do you think aerogravity assist is an actual thing or is it too theoretical and impossible? What do you think? Tell me everything you know. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and game you later. Bye-bye.